is in Iowa City today as the Iowa Hawkeyes get set to take on the Purdue Boilermakers in the final home game of the season for Iowa. I get everybody alongside Matt Miller and I'm Kevin Kugler. You know, you look at this Iowa team. Two weeks ago, the Hawkeyes pound Ohio State. Oh, yeah. Then last week, under 70 total yards of offense for Iowa in a loss to Wisconsin. So will the real Iowa team, whatever they are, stand up here today? Uh, I think that's the coaches would like to say would the real team stand up as well. And when they ask that question, what they're really saying is, look, our offensive line, we are dominated by our offensive line in the run game, and we need you for the pass. And when we're inconsistent, the rest of our team is inconsistent. And our young quarterback's inconsistent. And so this, this is a young, intermixed group, of a young and old in that offensive line. But as they go, this offense goes. And as Elijah Sindelar goes, so goes the Purdue offense right now. David Blau out for the rest of the season. And Sindelar was nicked up early in the week, but he's ready to go. Yeah, and so he practiced this week, and we'll see where he's going to be. But he needs to get into a rhythm, Kevin. If you watched the tape a week ago, when he started to throw and got into rhythm, he was pretty darn good. He can find his rhythm, they can find some wins, and they can start today. So Sindelar nicked up earlier in the week. That meant Jared Sparks, who is the backup quarterback, but the starting wide receiver, who's had zero pass attempts at this level, got some snaps at quarterback during practice this weekend. For more on that situation, let's check in with Lisa Byington. Kevin, Jared Sparks told me in the pregame, I've always wanted to play quarterback in college, so he's anxious and excited for this possible opportunity. But as you mentioned, there is zero film on him as a quarterback in college. Now, Iowa was so dialed into this story, they knew he might be a possibility Monday of this week. So they dug back into his high school film video. And when I told Sparks that, he kind of laughed about it and said, I'm happy that they got to check out my high school highlights. I think that's kind of cool. A Purdue injury update. Sophomore running back Jeff Braun confirmed to me in the pregame that Richie Worship is out for the year with a knee injury. Now, it's an injury that he suffered during practice of this week. Iowa has won the toss, and they have elected on senior day to receive the Hawkeye offense, ready to take over first. We are underway in Iowa City, and the kickoff will go through the end zone for a touchback, and out we go to the 25-yard line. So the Hawkeyes ready to take the field, and Nathan Stanley ready to try to lead the Hawkeyes up and down the field. Nathan Stanley, first year as a starter for the Hawkeyes, and 22 pass touchdowns this year, just five away from the single-season school record held by our BTN colleague, Chuck Law. Yeah, but Jeff, you've watched him go this year, Kevin. He has gained some confidence, but his confidence is directly tied to that offensive line. Easily in motion on first down. Stanley incomplete, looking for Noah Fant. And the pass jarred away by Jacob Fiedemann. There is a wind today, and that's going to bring the wind chill to 34 degrees. The sun finally out. It was cloudy most of the morning and early afternoon, but it is brisk, and that wind's going to be a factor in the pass game today. Yeah, especially the deep balls. And then each quarterback is going to have to be able to adjust and adapt in each team. But the biggest thing is, look, these teams, this Iowa team especially, they want to run the football. They want to dominate the ground game, and they're going to get back to it right now. Easily in motion on second down and 10. First carry for Akram Wadley. And Wadley picks up four to the 29-yard line. Not an easy task, Matt, to run on a Purdue defense that's one of the most improved defenses in college football. Yeah, I think Nick Holt, the defensive coordinator, has done a fantastic job with this group. And I think as this season has gone on, they have gained confidence, particularly up front and this linebacking core. And they've got the, they got a good one back in there now They're at their linebacker. I'm a... I'm a Big fan of uh, T.J. McCollum, number six. That kid's that kid's a good football player. Came back last week after missing almost a month at ten tackles in his return to the lineup, almost like he'd never left. Smith Marset in motion on third down and six for the Hawkeyes. 
Stanley to the air. That one sailed on him, looking for easily in the pass incomplete. And Purdue pitches a three and out. Yeah, no, they wanted to go. The ball was there. The ball just took off on Stanley, and he had protection. And so Stanley and Sindler are they're not on they're not dissimilar Kevin they need to find their rhythms early and that's what this coaching staff wants to do try to get some easy throws for them that one just took off on Jackson Hanthra back awaiting the punt takes a nice little Iowa spin I won't call that a roll because that was more of a spin as it dies inside the 40 yard line way to put the spin on it Kevin <laughs> Put it at the 33 <laughs> after the 38 yard punt and now the Boilermakers going to work right out of the gate Elijah Sindelar making his way onto the field he did not practice early in the week he was nicked up according to Jeff Brom but practiced late in the week and coming off a tremendous game all career highs in attempts completions and yardage against Northwestern and really got into a rhythm last week in that Northwestern game. On first down, the swing pass to DJ Knox out of the backfield, runs into the arms of Josie Jewell, and Jewell with the tackle at the 35, a pickup of two. Well, we'll be hearing Josie Jewell's name a lot today, just because this is guys as active a tackler as you're going to find in the Big Ten. He's got great instincts. He believes his eyes, and that sounds at home. You go, well, of course he does. No, not everybody does. In fact, that's one of the biggest mistakes young linebackers make. Second and eight, and the pass jarred away by Manny Ragumba at the 38-yard line. Ragumba getting the start today. Michael Ojemudia also back there in the secondary. They alternate a little bit. No, Ragumba gets the nod. Not where Purdue wants to be, third and long. They want to be third and five or less. This is not a good situation for them here against this young offensive line. See what kind of protection they're going to give. You saw the struggles on third down all year for this Purdue team. Iowa sitting in a two shell. Looks like they're going to be playing some zone. Third and eight. Four man pressure. Nobody open. Sindelar on the run. He's got some running room and he's got the first down. Chased out by Ragumba, but a first down for Sindelar. Yeah, Ragumba had to get depth. That's what you do if you're sitting in that zone, and the depth he gave was enough for Sindelar to be able, even nicked up, to be able to pick up this first. The nicked up is uh, that's code for a lot of things, Kevin. So nicked up can be, you know, almost a broken leg to anywhere to a scratch. But it just covers a multitude of things. Richie Worship earlier in the week was nicked up, yeah, and he, then Lisa got a confirmation <laughs> that he's out for the rest of the year. He done. That's a nick. On first down, Sindelar with protection, almost intercepted by Jewel. Yeah, there, that's a nice play by Jewel. That's instinct right there. And so you get your depth, you get your drop, and then you're reading the quarterback. And once you start to see, sometimes it's just a feel. Sometimes it's just a feel, which he has. He's just going to make that break before that ball even took off. That's just, you either have that or you don't have it. Jewel's got it. Second down and 10 at the 43. Draw play to Knox, and Knox caught from behind at the 46 by Ben Neiman. Third down and seven now for Purdue. Hawkeye defense really is led by those three backers, Neiman, Jewell, and Bauer. All three of them moving on, but all three of them, they play well together. Good communicators to each other. They control the front. That's a good group. Third and seven. Sindelar under pressure and he's sacked. A.J. Epinesa, the freshman, four and a half sacks on the year. Epinesa just came off that right side, just working one on one. You can see him on the top side, just does a nice job, got to the inside. So when you're rushing the passer, you don't want to go on a full guy. You want to get to half a man. So you split that guy, and you try to work to an edge. He worked to the inside edge, was able to get the sack. 26 straight games with at least one sack for Iowa. Now pressure on Joe Shopper, and flags are down. Vandenberg with a fair catch at the 17-yard line. It's either going to be running into or roughing. 
personal foul, roughing the kicker. There you go. Number 52, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Amani Jones. And the plant leg is what they were looking for here for Joe Shopper as he came down. Yeah, so watch the watch the bottom legs. Yeah, so it's it's touched and he's they're running into it when it's kind of fully extended, and that's what they're looking for, right there. Nick Neiman was the other Hawkeye there, and here comes Elijah Sindelar back to work again. So Purdue gets a second chance here. From the Iowa 45, first down. Sindelar sprints out the catch by Jarrett Burgess, and Burgess to the 37-yard line. There's a guy who's been emerging late in the year for this Purdue squad. Jarrett Burgess, 27 years old. The former minor league baseball player with his first catch of the day. And a quick snap. Markel Jones to the edge, and Jones with a first down inside the 35. Today's Auto Owners Insurance Impact players, Matt. Well, you're going to see Sparks. He's going to have some catches on the outside. He's going to be a quarterback. One of the either way, he's going to have an impact. Josie Jewell always has an impact. That's Josh Jackson. What kind of a year is he having, Kevin? He's having a phenomenal year. Seven seven interceptions. Two last week for pick sixes. He is. He's been on a tear lately. His last two weeks are an incredible year for most players. Yeah, it's a season. Sindelar to the sideline. Catch is made by Terry Wright. Diving down at the 29 in front of Josh Jackson. Just watching this offense, you know, look, I'm going to be brutally honest, okay? Purdue is very limited with talent. I think Jeff Brom does a phenomenal job with what he has. He keeps things off balance. He gives you, he'll take exactly what you give them. He is a, he's a really good play caller. Second and five. Sindelar over the middle, and that one's caught for the first down. And it was looked like it was tipped. Either. It did. Bryson Hopkins kind of caught that wobbler, and it was tipped on its way to Hopkins. That's Brad Hopkins' son right there. There's the tip. Brady Reef got his hands yeah. on that one. Still able to get it to Bryson Hopkins, who's got 21 catches now of the year. Meanwhile, they're moving down the field, Kev. First this is one of those things again. This is this is Jeff Brock. Quick slant to Burgess, his second catch at the 13-yard line. Josh Jackson on the stop, six-yard gain. That double double slant to the side. You, get, you clear the first guy, the second guy in. And Jeff Brown has been around it a long time. He is, you know what I love about him? He's got a defensive mentality and he's an offensive guy. He loves good, tough football. And you know what? He wins in the month of November. He's 11-2 and two in his career as a head coach in this month. Sindelar fakes to the left, goes back to the right, and he threw that one away. That wasn't bad by Sindelar, though. He faked inside, looked outside, and then came all the way back and had a shot in the end zone. So he's seeing the field pretty good, which tells you if you're getting to your third read, you've got some time to be able to throw the football. Third down and four. Purdue got second life on the roughing the kicker call on the punt. Now trying to cash in. Draw play Jones with a hole. And Jones twisting for the first down. Josie Jewell on the stop. Another nice call. Gim spread out. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, I, I ran into a couple of Purdue people in the hotel, and they got themselves a real-life coach. That guy is, he's legit. Hang on to him. You're going to win some games with him. 14th play of this opening possession. And the give on the right wide receiver sweep, and Anthrop going to be tripped up near the five-yard line. Tackled by Bo Bauer, second and goal. Now, Iowa's got to flex their muscle right here. They are, they're a more talented defense than this offensive group is. So they've got to be able to, they've got to be able to prove it right here. Sindelar 
The fade to Burgess, and Jackson nearly had another pick. <laughs> he almost had an Ohio State pick. One of those one arm things just pulled him down. Here's the thing with Jackson. Jackson will be, he'll be tight. Now watch, here's the difference. The difference is his length. He's got nice long arms and he's able to go up and make that play. That was good coverage, but he made the play. Third down and goal. Sparks, Anthrop, Burgess, the three receivers to the top with DJ Knox next to Elijah Sindelar. Oh, they got a backer on Knox. This is going to be interesting, and there it is. Looking that way, Sindelar going to run. Sindelar throwing for Knox, and Knox in the back of the end zone with the touchdown. And it was exactly what he was looking for. You get to that backside, you have an outside backer sitting on the tight end, and the inside backer has to take him. There's no one else because the safety was sitting on the other side. So Sindelar was very patient, stayed with it, used his feet, and then a nice adjust by Knox on the back of the end zone, and it's six quick. Well done. J.D. Dellinger on for the extra point. And the extra point makes it 7 nothing Purdue. A second chance turns into seven points. That second chance, a roughing the punter call that keeps the drive alive. Elijah Sindelar keeping the play alive to find DJ Knox for the touchdown. And Sindelar says, yeah, that's the way we want to start it here in Iowa City. Iowa took the ball, didn't get anything done. Purdue got the football. Their opening drive, 16 plays for the touchdown. And the Purdue Boilermakers with a 7 0 lead. DJ Knox, five yard touchdown catch. And that was really, that was creativity by DJ Knox. So once, once he knows the coverage right away, you can see it immediately. And once he knows and it's defined, you have to find a way to get open. And if you don't get open, then they, the defense is going to try to lock on you, and you've got to, you've got to shake them. And he did that. Ivory Kelly Martin from the five for Iowa. Trying to bounce it to the outside, and he'll be caught around the 20 yard line, where the Hawks will go back to work down 7 0. 7.53 remaining in the first. Welcome back to Iowa City. Lisa Byington inside the Children's Hospital. We are practicing the wave, right, everyone? We're getting set for this. Just a few moments away, Kevin and Matt, you know, this has become the wave at the end of the first quarter, has become one of the greatest traditions in college football. I'll be inside here in the next minute or so. So cool to watch it from the outside. I can't imagine watching the kids as they see it from the inside. Lisa's the lucky one today. James Butler. His first carry of the day, and Butler works his way to the 17-yard line to pick up a three. Jawan Bentley on the stop. Yeah, Bentley made the stop, but Bailey made the play. Marcus Bailey, he, he hit that lead blocker and stuffed him right in the hole. That's exactly how you're supposed to play defense. That's nice stuff. Well, I appreciate that. Second down and seven. Drake Kulik, that lead blocker. James Butler, the running back. Stanley on second down. Butler again with a hole. Butler sheds a tackle. Little hesitation by Butler. And Butler out of bounds across the 40-yard line. He picks up 25 on the scamper. Danny Easy Chuku had a shot at him, but couldn't pull him down. And that is the end of the first quarter of play in Iowa City with Purdue enjoying a seven to nothing lead. And it is time for today's Dr. Pepper craveable moment and this is the best tradition going right now in college football. It's the wave. Everybody waving in the stands, everybody waving on the field, both teams waving up to the Children's Hospital. Lisa Byington is in there with the kids and their families as everybody waves here in Iowa City. Great to see those families and all the smiles. That's awesome, Kev. It 
It started with a Facebook post from a Hawkeye fan. It's turned into one of the best things going in college football. The Wave in Iowa City. Purdue leads as we start the second quarter in Iowa City alongside Matt Millen with Lisa Byington. I'm Kevin Kugler, our entire BTN crew here. Enjoying a good one so far. Purdue with the early lead, but Iowa just got a big run from James Butler, who stays in as the running back on first down and 10 at the 42-yard line. And Butler the carry once more. Butler down at the 45-yard line as we... On second and eight, there's Noah Fant. And Fant with a first down into Purdue territory at the 45. Nice play call by Brian Ferris, your offensive coordinator. A little bit of misdirection. Fant's a guy that really is going to have a really bright future. I mean, he has a really bright future. He runs well. He's got good size. He's still learning the position. He can be a good blocker. He's good, he's good down the field. This is, a, this is a kid to keep your eyes on here in the next couple of years. Kind of on the skinny side right now, but... He'll fill out. Stanley on first down. What a catch. Inside the 40 is Nick Easley with the fingertip grab. Navon Mosley on the stop after a 21-yard pickup and a flag down in the backfield again. That was a nice hit. He just picked that thing right out of the air, Kevin. That's the way you're supposed to pluck a ball. Personal foul. Hands in the face. Defense number 11. 15-yard from the end of the run. That's Miles. Anton Miles is starting to have the sack. You can see him down here, number 11. Down here, number... You're going to watch him. Oh, he's coming off into a... I'd say it's just maybe removing his helmet. That was not <laughs> so much hands to the face. And since it was the helmet coming off at the behest of another player on the opposite side, he didn't have to leave the game. I don't know if he knows what behest means, but... <laughs> There's a flag. So now, first and 10 at the 24. Butler caught in the backfield. Good play made. Knifing in to make the stop was Jacob Thieneman. Yeah, I'm going to show you that exactly. What they did, they're, they're loading the box. I mean, they're daring. Iowa to throw the football. Thiedemann, you're going to watch him. He's going to walk all the way down up inside. So he's always, they're playing nine men up front, ten men up front. So you can't account for everybody. Thiedemann's the guy who's clear. You better make the tackle. Well done. Second and 11 at the 25. Butler, the single back. Stanley to throw. And that one threw the hands of Butler and incomplete. Eddie Wilson with a little bit of late pressure up the middle, but it's third down. Eddie Wilson, Kevin, you and I, you and I liked him when we watched his tape early in the season. And he's kind of, you know, he's kind of slowed down a little bit, but he's got some skills. His first two steps off the ball are special good. If he can, he can develop the rest of his game. That's a, that's a player to make it. Junior out of Pontiac, Michigan, backing up Lorenzo Neal. Both of those guys see a ton of time in the middle of that defensive line. Third down and 11, both Wadley and Butler in in the backfield. Pressure coming. Stanley in trouble. Stanley is sacked, and it's Eddie Wilson. We were just talking about him, and for the second time today, Purdue gets to Nathan Stanley. And he's able to come on. His get off was perfect, and then he was able to redirect. You're going to watch him here on the inside. Is there no number seven? Really well done. See, just it's like a kind of a whirling dervish. Once you get started, don't stop. Work to an edge. One side's taken. Get to the other side. Really well done by Wilson. And on fourth and 20, the Hawkeyes line up to go. He may punt it right here. And he does. Stanley with a good kick. And the coverage is there as well. Purdue going to start inside their own two. Nick Easley down there to down it at the two-yard line. Kirk Ferentz hit it. The Boilermakers deep. Yeah. But if Wisconsin wins the Big Ten championship game, Wisconsin's going to be in the college football playoff. I still don't trust Oklahoma's defense. To me, they, they're okay. Sparks in motion on first down. The give 
to Knox, and not much running room as Neiman is there, the first man to get there. Well, but before the college football playoff, of course, Saturday, December 2nd, the champions of the East and West Divisions collide in Indianapolis for the conference's ultimate prize. Don't miss the 2017 Big Ten Football Championship game presented by Discover. Saturday, December 2nd, it's only on Fox. And we know that if Ohio State hangs on to beat Illinois today, thanks to the Michigan loss, our matchup will be set. It will be Wisconsin and Ohio State. Second and ten, Sindelar pops, Sindelar sacked, it's a safety. Nathan Bajida on senior day with a safety to get the Hawkeyes on the board. And the pump was because of coverage. So Bunchner should turn around and be happy with his safety because his coverage down the field was where it was supposed to be. But he just relentless, so he just keeps on coming. That's just kind of the, just kind of the way Bunchner is. He never quits. Seven two lead for Purdue Iowa with some momentum Nathan Bajita with a safety a moment ago the sack of Elijah Sindelar in the end zone to get the Hawkeyes on the board and Iowa's last couple of games they've scored 16 points all by their defense the first safety since last November against Michigan for Iowa talking there's Reese Morgan their defensive line coach he does a really good job with this defensive line has for some time and does he get a ton of really talented guys? The guys he gets, though, are always fundamentally sound, tough, and they always play at the next level. They're just good, tough kids. Kind of like Iowa wrestling. Same old stuff. 10.44 in the second quarter. <laughs> For those who mentioned, have Matt mentioning wrestling in the pool as you play along at home, it's BTN Bingo. And the kickoff out of bounds on the free kick. Did I mention that was a lousy kick, Kevin? <laughs> Wadley with a little bit of a crease, turns it into a bigger crease, and caught by Thiedemann at the 35-yard line. 15 yards for Akram Wadley, and a first down for Iowa. Nice job there by Tristan Wharf, number 74. Your right tackle does a nice job getting up to second level. See how he gets to the next level? He's able to take that backer and be able to get him to the into the third level and just a young one. I mean these, these are young tackles. Just Alaric Jackson 77 and Worf 74. They're gonna be pretty darn good. Wadley again and Wadley inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line. Tristan Worf's that freshman right tackle. Very strong, terrific shot putter, discus thrower when he was in high school, but the first true freshman to start a tackle under Coach Ferentz. And so, and there's a lot that goes into that. But the biggest part is from the neck up, Kevin. It's the mental preparation, and it's the mental awareness of knowing that, hey, it's your job, and you got to produce. He has gotten nothing but better the longer he's played, and he'll continue to do that. He's got a really bright future. Ready to go, the Ike Butker injury kind of opening the door for Tristan Wirfs to come in early. Second and three at the 28th. Here's Akram Wadley again, and Wadley trying to find some running room. Not much there. Wirfs was trying to clear an opening, but Jalen Robinson was there to make the stop. So one of the things, you can, I want to show you something here in this offensive line. One of the things they do exceptionally well is they all take the same steps. They all work together. Now, Wirfs is getting pushed around a little bit on the inside, but he maintains his balance and stays on top of his block. All you have to do is stay between the blocker and the runner and let the runner pick his poison. Third down and three at the 28. Brady Ross in at fullback. Akram Wadley, the running back. Wadley, the carry on third down. Leaping for the first to the 25. The lunge by Wadley flying over Jawan Bentley to move the chains. Iowa always seems to have an Akram Wadley. Wadley, you know, he started a little bit slow in his career. You could see what he was going to do. Every year he's gotten better. He's reliable, catches the ball well out of the back. He's a next level player. He's at the very least he'll be tough on special teams and they'll give you something out of the back there. They're dropping the safety down, loading the box again, see if they don't go ahead and throw it. They got singled on the outside with a single high safety. From the 25 on first down. 
And Wadley out of bounds. I want to go back to that leap one more time for the first down because you got to watch Akram Wadley. Look at his eyes. He's going to turn his head to the sideline, Matt, to see where he is going to find. Look at him, peering to the sideline. Am I going to get the first down? Is this leap going to get me there in time? Yeah, it will. Yeah. There's just so many things. You know, Kevin, years ago, Years ago at NFL Films, uh, we were going to do a, a project on one play and all the decisions that are made on one play. And that's a great insight as to see it. There's so many things you do in the middle of a play. It's, it's astonishing. Second and nine at the 24. Stanley batted down at the line by Lorenzo Neal. And nicely done by Neal because Fan was wide open for a first down. Fan had beaten his coverage. It was at the, about the 15-yard about the line. Lorenzo Neal, of course, the son of Lorenzo Neal, the big old fullback, is tough as nails. His son's same way. He has manned that no spot in there for, for Purdue all season long. I think he's had a really good season. I know they, they love him in the inside. And Nick Holt, the D coordinator, can't say enough about him. Ivory Kelly Martin is the running back. The give is to Smith Marset to the edge and upended at the 20 yard line. Really nice job by Thieneman working off his block to make the tackle before Smith Marset could cut it back inside. If I can't tell if that's a nice job by Thieneman or Smith Marset just got <laughs> confused and ran right into him. <laughs> he didn't make anybody miss. So now fourth down and five at the 20 and the offense staying on the field again. Now the last time they were out on fourth down, Nathan Stanley pooch punted. It's not happening here. No, it's not happening here. Inside, outside, high, down below. For your coverage. That's Smith Marset again in motion. They're 11 of 16 on fourth down this year. Stanley pumps, throws, caught! Vandenberg, first and goal! That was all on Stanley. Kevin, they were gonna wait. They were gonna bring that double inside move. He was gonna hit the second guy. But watch him wait for this window to open. And it's a tiny window. <laughs> that is small, man. That is a great throw. And Kirk Ferris says, my guy's on today. That was a leap for joy in Kirk Ferris's world. Those <laughs> two claps of the hands. First and goal to two. Akram Wadley with the carry. Akram Wadley gives the Hawkeyes the lead. Kevin, they just pounded that right side the entire time. That's trust in a freshman in Werfs. They went behind him for virtually that whole series. Racino saw that good with the extra point because both teams are headed to the locker room. Halftime is here in Iowa City. And the home team on senior day takes a 9-7 lead into the locker room. A lot of good football played in that first half. Yeah. Saw some big hits, some fine plays, good defense on both sides, and a good ball game at the half. Iowa leading 9-7 to our Chicago studios when we return. Ready for the start of the second half here in chilly Iowa City this afternoon. Iowa with a 9-7 lead as we start the third quarter. Kevin Kugler alongside Matt Miller. Time to check in with Lisa Byington, who checked in herself with the head coach of Purdue, Jeff Brom. Yeah, I did. And, and the word on Jared Sparks is he's going to give it a go. At least that's what he told me running out of the locker room. They retaped that right ankle, and he's been warming up here. And there is less of a limp, I can tell you, than there was at the end of the first half. Now, if Jared Sparks cannot go, the backup for Elijah Sindelar, if he is out of the game, it would have to be freshman Nick Sight. They would have to take the red shirt off of him, and he would then become the quarterback for Purdue. So a dicey, dicey situation for the Boilermakers in the second half. How about that, Matt? If you had to take in game 11 the red shirt off, 
of a kid that you're redshirting for the future. By the way, if the name Sipe sounds familiar, it should. He is the nephew of Brian Sipe, the former quarterback of the Cleveland Browns, who was the MVP of the National Football League in 1980. And I'm not going to mention Red Right 88 at all, but that's a big deal to take his red, that red shirt off. You, you really don't want to do that. That would be an absolute last resort. Just a freshman, you want to develop this kid and have him for, for the records of five years if you can, and I'm, I'm sure they'll try to do everything they can to do that. Somewhere Brian's listening, he's like, you're an idiot, Miller. <laughs> <laughs> to which I'll say I already knew that, so we're good. I <laughs> am just going to say this. There were a few kids in my neighborhood that were Brian Sipe fans. Well, actually, there was one. It was me. I loved Brian Sipe as a kid growing up. I don't know why. But, man, I was a huge Brian Sipe fan. Kick off through the end zone for the touchback. And out to the 25, it'll come. First down at the 25 for the Boilermakers. Sindelar to the air on first down. Breaking a tackle is Mahungu, and he's got the first across the 35. Manny Ragumba had a chance to stop him at about five yards, but instead it turns into 11 and a first down. You're going to sit off. They're going to take what they give you. And then, it, you know, if you miss a tackle or something, you pick up a first down and maybe something breaks. That's what they count on. First down and 10 at the 44. Sindelar to the air. Mahungu with a catch. Another first down. Out to the 42-yard line. This Purdue team plays teams close, Matt. They've done it all year. Five of their six losses by 10 points or fewer. You could argue that nobody's played Wisconsin in the league as tough as Purdue did in a game we had earlier this year on BTN. And Brown calls the game that way. I mean, he knows what his team is. He can't put it in a position to get blown out. So he's got to try to keep it tight. So this is what you see in the whole game. Taking he's a got deep it. shot. Mahoom to open. Touchdown! 42 yards and Purdue takes the lead as Anthony Mahungu went right past Manny Ragumba for the touchdown. Three straight, Kev. Went after Ragumba. Ragumba, they, they knew they had something. So he says, hey, I could get on top of him. Well, when you say it, you better do it. And Mahungu did a really nice job of getting on top of the coverage. And the ball was right where it had to be. That was really well done. They don't get a lot of deep shots. Anthony Mahungu leads this team four catches of 30 yards or more, and that's the longest catch of his career at 42. And Purdue storming out of the locker room. Takes the 14-9 lead, just 57 seconds off the clock in the third quarter. Anthony Mahungu all the way in for the touchdown to start the third. When you're trying to make a bowl game, every moment is a little bit bigger. Anthony Mahungu with a 42-yard touchdown to give Purdue a lead. They need to win today, and they need to win next week. For Jeff Brom in his first year to get this Purdue Boilermaker squad to a bowl game, it would be a remarkable achievement for this staff coming in, especially from what we saw with Purdue over the last couple of years, Matt. They have really made this program competitive in a hurry. Ready to kick it off. You saw the wind causing problems for that ball on the tee. It is a windy late afternoon in Iowa City, and the kickoff through the end zone over the head of Ivory Kelly Martin for the touchback. From the 25 on first down, Akram Wadley, nice cutback, a little jump cut to find yardage to his left, and he picks up nearly five before Dewan Hunt can trip him up. Yeah, and so anytime you're gonna cut back inside, you keep your eyes on James Daniels and what he's doing. Because Daniels is a difference maker, number 78, the center inside. This guy here has tremendous hip. He must have been a good wrestler. He has excellent hips, his hands are good. His first three steps are, this is gonna be a high pick someplace. But keep your eyes on 78 when you look at this offensive line. He's a difference maker. Stanley off play action. Throws it short and incomplete. Everybody was covered. Excellent coverage by Purdue. They picked up both Hawkinson and Fant. And they picked up our United States Marine Corps leader of the game, senior wide receiver Matt Vandenberg, who not only doing well in the classroom, the two-time academic All-Big Ten, but he does a lot of community service here in Iowa City. Hospital visits, including University Hospital, the local VA hospital, 
Just a real contributor on and off the field. Our United States Marine Corps leader of the game. Third down and six at the 29. Smith Marset in motion. Stanley to throw. Pressure picked up. Smith Marset on the sideline. Dropped it at the 46 yard line of Purdue. It floated and hung for what seemed like forever. And the freshman couldn't pull it in. And he may be hurt. He's, his pride's hurt. That's what's hurt. That should have been a caught ball, and he knows it. He's going to go over there and hide for a little bit. And he's okay. The move was perfect. In a double move, all you do is catch the ball. He knows it. As soon as he hits the ground, he knows it. Right there, he knows it. So the Hawkeyes will punt it away. Rastetter out of bounds. Yes. Bad punt. Lousy punt. That's going to be a midfield for Purdue. Rastetter only 21 yards on the punt. 13.05, third quarter, 14 to 9, Purdue over the Iowa Hawkeyes here at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. Second drive for Purdue to begin at midfield. And it looks like. Sindelar going up top. Mahundu there again. And it doesn't matter who's on him. This time Oshibunia and Mahundu right by him to the 15 of Iowa. 35 yards. Mahundu did a really good job with that route. So he got Ojibudia back down inside. Watch how he gives it inside. Now he gives the outside the ability to be able to make that throw. And that's the difference in the throw. There was room on the outside, and it was Zamahungu. Really well done. Knocks on the toss. Nowhere to go, and Jewel there to bring him down. Give a little credit as well to Sam Brinks. But here's Anthony Mahungu showing up big. Well, look, if you have something, you go after it. And Jeff Brom's not afraid to go out. These are the last four plays. Here's the touchdown, and then here's the big play right after it. So not afraid to go out and pick at that scab, and you keep picking until it bleeds. Now it's Matt Hankins, the freshman, trying to cover Mahungo at the top of the screen. Sindelar looking that direction, looking for Mahungo in the end zone. Mahungo's got it. It's a touchdown. And yeah, that is awesome. Sindlar would just drop a dime right there, boys. Mahungu ran a good route. The coverage wasn't bad. That ball had to be right in. Look at this throw. Look at the coverage. He's right on top of it. Turn your head. Now, he doesn't turn his head, but, yeah, he has control. His feet are in bounds. Mahungu, play number five in a row, is touchdown number two. Anthony Mahungu, seven catches, 135 yards, assuming this is good, and it is. Both career highs. Anthony Mahungu is on fire in Iowa City. Dellinger with the extra point, and it's 21-9 Purdue. Last two drives, all Anthony Mahungu. 21-9, the man on the right is Jeff Brom, the man on the left is Anthony Mahungu. The calls from the man on the right have all gone to the man on the left over and, the last couple of moments. And the man on the left is happy that his quarterback is dead on. He has made some great throws. The protection's been there. Sindelar was 5 for 5 for 118. Two touches. Mahungu has been eating up whoever they put over there. They went through three corners, Kevin. Three corners on three series, two touchdowns. And the kickoff through the end zone for the touchback. So now the Hawkeyes at the 29. Butler tripped up, trying to make his move. Antoine Miles has had a good day, makes the tackle. Bailey's had himself a nice game today. McCombs had a nice game today. Neal on the inside. 
bit some pretty solid defenders for this Purdue defense. Second down and 10 at the 29. Stanley to throw. Pressure oh, coming. Stanley in trouble. Play. And Stanley is sacked. T.J. McCollum went airborne to land on Nathan Stanley. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not a lot of people talk about McCollum. McCollum is a really good player. One of the best players I've watched in the Big Ten all season long. He's coming on a blitz. You can see him. Now, the guy he just ran over is a really good player. He just dropped. Watch him drop his hips. And he just powers through him. That is a big time play. Well done, TJ McCollum. You're a good player. Second sack of the year. Fifth sack today for Purdue. Iowa had allowed 16 all year. And here's Butler on third and 21. Butler well shy of any first down. And the Hawkeyes will punt. And the crowd getting a little restless again as we wind down this third quarter. At one point, Brian Ferentz is going to have to open this thing up. He's going to have to put it on his quarterback and say, you know, it's your, you're going to have to win it for us. As they are, this Purdue defense is tough to run against. They, have, they are grudgingly giving up yards. Another punt. Anthrop backs away from this one. Dying at the 39. Not a good day in the punt department for the Hawkeyes. From the 39 on first down, batted down. Brady Reef, second time he's poked one out of the air today and it's second and ten he had Phillips Phillips was open sitting in his own boy ever since Josh Jackson found Anthony Mahungu yeah. Sindelar has not been able to find him yeah he doesn't even look over there not sure I would either <laughs> you gotta at least test him He's done an inside route or something. Second and ten to the air. Caught first down. Anthrop with the grab at the 44-yard line. Taylor on the stop. And we are going to reach the end of the third quarter on that play. The dean of Big Ten coaches, Kirk Ferentz, going against the newbie in the Big Ten, Jeff Brom. Right now, the new guy with the edge. Start of the fourth quarter. Not a good day to catch popcorn in the wind. But I appreciate his stick to it. Yeah, just more. Just shovel more. <laughs> That's a, at the end, that was the right way to do it. Yep. Just shove it in your face. From the 44 first down, Sindelar out of the air, caught at the 40, and a falling forward is Cole Herdman to the 38-yard line. See, there you go. Yeah, that's the way to do it. One at a time, no. One oh, time. his friend helping him out by dumping the whole pole. <laughs> DJ Knox to the 37 yard line. Ball may have come out. Yeah. It did come out. Kirk Barron has it. Let's stop. Third down. You heard forward third progress down. stop, so it's third down. And you cannot review. When they say forward progress is stopped, that is not a reviewable play. So third down and four at the Hawkeye 38. Time for somebody on Iowa to make a defensive play. Sindelar, three touchdowns, a career high today. Third and four, Sindelar, swing pass dropped by DJ Knox. It was gonna be close, he was gonna have to make a move on Jake Gervas to get the first down, but he dropped it, rendering that point moot, and it's fourth down. It was the right place to go with the ball, it was the only thing he had. They took coverage away, where they really took it away, is Mahomes down the field. Okay, they, they've done a really nice job, that was an excellent job with, uh, with Josh Jackson. Joe Shopper on to punt from the Iowa 38-yard line. 68 yarder his last time this time he'll try to finesse it deep hangs it up into the wind Vandenberg with the catch near the 16 yard line Iowa Hawkeyes down with 1348 to go can Nathan Stanley spark a comeback a timeout 
1348 remaining in the fourth. Purdue 21, Iowa 9. Kevin Kugler, Matt Millen, Lisa Byington. Iowa moving with the wind. All 30 points today have been scored in the end zone. The Hawkeyes are moving towards right now with that wind at their back. From the 17, Stanley will go to the air on first down. Wanted to go deep, checks it down, and throws it over the head of James Butler. What Purdue's defense has been so good today, Matt. Yeah, and they have, and they've been able to get home free, and a lot of times getting unblocked, but they've been getting the sacks to the inside and off the edge virtually all game long. And if Kirk, Brian Ferris, the offensive coordinator for Iowa, is going to open this thing up, he's going to have to solve the sacks off the edge. Second down and 10 at the 17. Akram Wadley the carry and nowhere to go for Wadley. Let's check in with Lisa. Well, we can get this. We've got one more quarter, boys, is what Jeff Brown told this sideline. And frankly, it's a sideline that's not just excited, it's confident. I'm hearing all kinds of things of one more quarter. We have them right where we want them. Jeff Brown does not use the getting qualified or eligible for a bowl game as a carry yet, but Mark my words, this team is very visible that they know that they're playing for the season here tonight. Yeah, if they win this one and win next week in the matchup with Indiana for the old Oak and Bucket, Jeff Brom squad's going bowling in their first year at Purdue. Fumbled snap. Stanley able to gather himself and fire. The catch is made by Easley, and that's a first down. Good poise by Nathan Stanley. Exactly, Kevin. That was money right there. He saw that safety coming. He trusted his back was going to come over. Watch the back come over. He's going to come up, and he picks the ball up, and then there's good protection, and that is a dart. Right where it needed to be. Yeah, tip of the cap to that offensive line. You don't see a fumbled snap turn into a first down very often. But they gave him the time to find easily. Hawkinson motioning on first down. Wadley trying to get outside. Pushed back by Wilson and then slips, making his cut. And he loses yardage to the 37, a loss of four. Okonye covered him up, but give Eddie Wilson the credit for that one. Exactly right. So Kanye makes a tackle, but Wilson makes the play. Wilson's been making quite a few plays here today. A little bit on the undisciplined side. When he gets his game together, that's a good football player. I tell you, his first couple steps, we talked about him coming off the ball. He's pretty darn good. Second and 14 at the 37. Stanley. Good strike throw on Vandenberg with the catch. More on Eddie Wilson. Here's Lisa Byington. Yeah, he's not playing 100% healthy. He had to get that left ankle retained. And remember, guys, that's an ankle that's been bothering him all season long. It's an ankle that actually put him out eventually of the Wisconsin game earlier in the year. It's also an ankle that gave him some problems last week, so keep an eye on that. It's also an ankle that he's still favored. You can see it yep. as he's walking. Oh, we're getting some great shots here today, Matt. Nice close-up of the limp there from Eddie Wilson. Third down and eight at the 43. Stanley, good protection, throws it short to Wadley. Now Wadley looking for the first down. He's got it. Thiedemann chased him out. He got the first, but kept. When he first took off, he, he slipped again. That's the second time he slipped in as many plays. You can watch it. Trying to get his stuff together, you're just like, whoa. Iowa Wadley, though, is one good football player and has, you know what he has? His great awareness of where he's at on the field at all times. Understood where the first was, got the first. Hawks now five of nine on third down in the second half. They were one for six in the first half. Butler now the running back play action. Stanley will throw it short to Butler, makes the catch at the 45 and down at the 44 in the arms of Marcus Bailey. It's a two-yard gain. Even when they try to push something down the field, they end up always checking it down, which tells you they're not getting any separation down the field. And in this particular play, it's the same thing. Nothing there, so they check it back underneath. Time becoming a factor now, Matt. 8.55 yeah. to play in the fourth. And Iowa still a long way from the end zone. They've got to get points on this, this drive. This has got to be six points. You get six here, and then you play for that last one, you're good. 11th play of the drive, second and eight at the Purdue 44. Three-step drop over the middle. Hawkinson can't pull it in. Is it picked off? What a pick by Navon Mosley. Off the carom, Mosley with a circus grab to turn the Hawkeyes away. 
Germany needed to make a play, and Mosley was the guy. They tried to force that ball on the inside, and it's a night, it's a tight throw, Kevin. I mean, it is a tight throw. You're going to get it back inside, but Mosley, wherewithal, pick, going the other way. A BTN standout to turn the Hawkeyes aside. Navon Mosley off the deflection, fired up. Our BTN standout gives Purdue the ball. 8.27 remaining in the fourth. Purdue 21, Iowa 9, and the Boilermakers just get it back on the turnover. And on first down, they give to Markel Jones, and Jones fights his way for a first down. Boy, Fight is Purdue tough. confident and tough right now. And this defense for Purdue just continues to shine. They've allowed two touchdowns or fewer in six straight games. Pretty good company to be in when you're talking about Wisconsin's defense. Kevin, they have played tough all season long. And, you know, the, people see the... <laughs> people see... <laughs> people see the losses, but this is a good football team. <laughs> Jones again. And Jones inside the Iowa 45, down near the 44, pickup of three. Josie Jewell, who's into double figures tackle-wise, seventh straight game with double-digit tackles in the 21st game in his career into double figures. And he'd rather have the win any time. And that, you know, it's seven and a half minutes going here with this, with this Purdue team playing with good confidence. That thing looks like it's kind of slipping away on him. And the Boilermakers trying to keep their hopes for a bowl game alive. If they can win here, it comes down to next week against Indiana. Each team a win away from bowl eligibility as Jones trying to find some room up the middle runs into the arms of Nathan Bugeta after a pickup of a yard. Third down and five at the 42. Critical down right here for both teams. And so what you get, if you're Iowa right now, you have got to get off the field. It's your only shot. You got to get off the field, get the ball back, and you've got to score points. See if Sinlar can get it for him. Down, Sindelar looking deep down the sideline, incomplete. Aiming for Gregory Phillips, Matt Hankins, the freshman with excellent coverage. And there's your, there's your crack in the armor right there. This good coverage, and this still has a chance. But that goes throw. right through his hands, Kevin. That should have been a catch. Oh, look look at, that. at that. What a throw by a Sindelar. Great throw by Sindelar. He's really been on today, Matt. He's yes, had a he has. fine day. Punt into the wind, a very short one. Vandenberg goes out. The ball is in the hands of the Boilermakers. It caroms off Vandenberg, and Antonio Blackman scoops it up at the 16. Purdue ball. That's by the return team. Recovered by the kicking team. First down and 10, Purdue. Punt returns have been a concern for Kirk Ferentz. You know what this is right here? This is, I've got to catch the ball no matter what. I can't let it happen like it did a week ago. Yep. That's exactly That's what happened. Point, because last week, two went by him. Cost him yardage and field position. Matt Vandenberg was absolutely intent on making that play. Battling the wind. And Purdue gets another chance. From the 16, it's Jones trying to get to the outside. A flag comes in. May have been a face mask on Epinesa. Markel Jones, the ball carrier. There's a penalty mark around the feed. Yeah, you can see Epinesa right there. Tell you what, our camera guy, you're right, Kevin. We've had some great shots here tonight. I mean, I'm not surprised we've been with this crew all year. They must have got a good night's sleep last night. They're really on it today. Personal foul. <laughs> Face mask. Face mask. Defense, number, Defense 94. number 94. Half the distance to the goal. 
Automatic first down. First and goal for the Boilermakers. Bobble. Sindelar able to cover it up. Knox trying to grab it. Sindelar got it back, and it's second and goal. Yeah, so one went the wrong way. I don't know who it was, but one of them did. But the wherewithal to get on it was present there by Sindelar. Tighten the coverage. Give me a little pressure. Put some pressure on this quarterback. And remember, they're going into the wind, so no field goal is considered a chip shot in this yeah. spot of the field. Second down, Sindelar airing it out. Back corner of the end zone, missing Gregory Phillips. Hankins again on the coverage. Yeah. Nicely done. Now, short, short area of the field. You're inside the 10-yard line, so you want it. You look, you have a short field. You don't have to. You just have to get your hands on and be physical for 20 yards. That's it. The only way to really run away from coverage here is a crossing route. And so your inside cover guys, your backers and stuff, they've got to be aware of crossers down here. you got to be able to knock them off. Anthony Mahungo at the bottom of the screen against Jackson. They haven't touched him since his five straight throws. On third and goal, Sindelar rolling right, throws it short to Anthrop. Excellent defensive play by Ben Neiman. Blocked the entire time by Cole Herdman. He still made the tackle. Yeah, well, Herdman thought he had a block, but he was just toying with him. He was just playing with him. And when the time came to have to make the play, he just dis disengaged and made the play. Neiman's, that's a good, sound football player. 3.59 to go as Purdue will line up for a short field goal, but again, this is into a very stiff win. 27-yard try for J.D. Dellinger. Tough angle, too. Dellinger from 27. And the kick by Dellinger is good. That was not an easy 27-yard field goal. J.D. Dellinger made it look easy. 24-9, Purdue. Two scores. Three minutes, 55 seconds to play in the fourth quarter, and Iowa in some trouble at home. Down by 15 points as the Purdue Boilermakers have added three to their lead. Elijah Sindelar has been excellent. 229 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. A quarterback rating of over 138 this afternoon. Yeah, he brought his A game. He really did. Now, keep it, that, that being said, it's only a two-score game, Kevin. Kickoff into the wind, taken at the two-yard line by Smith Marset. Amir Smith Marset has a big lane, has speed to the 40. Smith Marset to midfield and pulled down at the 45-yard line. TJ Jallo saved a touchdown as Smith Marset had a full head of steam, but gives Iowa the short field. All right, just running with his eyes. So this is designed to go to the left as you're looking at it. He sees it open to the right and then. Hey, just run where they're not. That's what he does very well. His pride came back. <laughs> Broke the tackle of kicker Spencer Evans to get extra yardage. And out at the 45 is where the Hawks break huddle first down. This game is far from over. Quick six right here. And we got ourselves another game. A whole different game. Max Cooper in there at the slot at the bottom of your screen. Toss to the sidelines, short, skips in front of Anderberg, and it's second down. Nate Stanley, 12 of 24, 132 yards and an interception. Our State Farm postgame report coming up. Still 341 to play here in the fourth. But it feels like he played better than that, Kevin. It does. Doesn't it? Yeah, I was, as I'm saying those numbers, they didn't seem right, but they are. No, the numbers are right. He's he's got to finish it right here. Second and ten at the 45. Pressure up the middle. He's in trouble and he's sacked again. Jalen Robinson 
And Easy Chuku both there, the sixth sack for Purdue. Matt, they had 16 sacks as a defense all year. They have six in this game. There is no way that you were gonna say that you're gonna get all these sacks. You're gonna say, Robbins is coming number 13. He's working to the inside. That's just Easy Chuku on the outside, forcing back inside. Robinson cleaned it up. That's a season high in sacks for Purdue, as you might imagine. Third down and 15. Stanley pressure again. Throws to the sideline oh, and what man. a catch by Smith Marset. And what a dart. That ball was right where it had to be. I mean, coverage was all over him. He stuck that thing on him. Hawks get a first down. Stanley trying to get him going. 2.49 to play. Down 15 at home. Stanley again, four-man pressure. Throws, caught easily at the 25. Clock will run. Thieneman on the stop. He's got to hurry it. All guys had to use a timeout earlier. They have two remaining. They'll hustle up to the line on second and one at the Purdue 25. First down will stop the clock, but this is running right now. He's got to get it out. Second down and one. Stanley, the give to Wadley. Wadley with a first down, twisting to the Purdue 19. Clock stops while they set the chains. 2.15 to play. He's got to go to the end zone right now. It's 20 yards throw, not a big deal. Clock running. Out to slide under two minutes to go. Stanley taking a lot of time. First down and 10 at the 19. Shotgun snap to Stanley, floats it down the sideline, looking for the end zone, the pass incomplete, wanted Vandenberg, no flags. Good coverage, good call. Official's right there, he's, he's on top of the whole thing. Yeah, so they're gonna hand fight a little bit, he's gonna let him play, Vandenberg does the same thing, that's... That's good, I'm good with that. Second down and 10 at the 19. Stanley hit as he throws for the sideline. Oh. Smith Marset with the grab. It's first and goal. Money again, Kevin. As I said, he seems like he's playing better than what those numbers were because the ball's coming out really well and he is dead on. First and goal at the six. Hawkeyes trying to frantically rally in this game, down 15. Stanley again, pressure up the middle. Stanley in trouble, steps away, and slings it out of bounds, incomplete. Smartly throws it out, that's okay. Yeah, that ball was thrown, Kevin, before that break was ever made. So it's great anticipation and understanding exactly where his receiver is going to be. He's going to have to have all of that right now. He's got to score now. Stanley's taking some punishment. He's also dropping some dimes, man. He's throwing the ball well. Second and goal at the six. Stanley floating it for nope. Smith Marset. DeWan Hunt, the closest player on either team to that ball, and it's third and goal. Hunt's seen the same route two times in a row. Third down and goal. Get Fant to the back of the end zone. He's got seven touchdown catches this year. Not on the field right now, though. No, Hawkinson put him in the back of the end zone. Run him around the back, off the edge. Hawkinson to the bottom of the screen. Third and goal to six. Stanley looking. Pressure again. In trouble. Stanley able to get away. Good for him. Stanley looking for the end zone. Nobody open. Now throws, and he throws it away. It's fourth and goal. Antoine Miles was hot in pursuit of Nathan Stanley. And the Hawkeyes game and chances are coming down to this play right here on fourth and goal. He had the right idea with Hawkinson in the back of the end zone. He just couldn't get there. The wind really whipping right now. Just blew the ball off its spot at the six yard line. And Fent back in the game. 
He and Smith Marset to the top of the offensive line along with Nick Easley. Vandenberg to the bottom of the screen. Fourth down and goal. Rush three, drop eight. Stanley throwing in zone. Caught for the touchdown. All right, Kevin, one of two things. You go for two now or you wait. For me, I wait. I get the sure thing right now. Get my get my extra point in. They're gonna go for two. It's like they're going for two. The problem with this is if you don't get it, exactly, it's over. Exactly. It's a nine-point game. So that's why I, I take the point. Iowa going for two, trying to make it. A seven-point game with 64 seconds to play. Stanley changing it up. Checked it. Here's the two-point try. Pressure coming. Stanley for the end zone. Looking for Fant. No good. It's over. And it's a nine-point game with 64 seconds That's to go. Why you kicked the field goal? I mean, to kick the extra point there. Give yourself a chance. Live for another down. A quick 30-second timeout in Iowa City. Both teams back out. Iowa lining up for an onside kick try. Racinos will kick. Hands team out for Purdue. There's the kick. Pops up right into the hands of the tight end, Bryson Hopkins. Right. Hawkeye fans have to be thinking, what happened to the team we saw on November 4th exactly. to beat Ohio State 55-24 yep. right in this building? Went to Wisconsin and lost last week. And now come back home on senior day, and they're going to lose to the Purdue Boilermakers. And our Duluth training hardest working player, this is one of the easiest picks of the year, Elijah Sindelar. He was terrific today. 229 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions, was in complete control yep. all day long. And as you said earlier, Matt, if this is a nicked up Elijah Sindelar. Keep him nicked. <laughs> I should keep him out of practice every Monday or Tuesday to start the week. Up at Markel Jones breaking free, first down and more. And Jones pulled down at the 10 by Matt Hankins. And that run seals Purdue's fifth win of the season. Back up by Matt Hankins. Kevin, the thing I want to go back to in this game, which was a turning point in this game, was when they came out in the third quarter and they had Mahungu outside in a matchup that they liked. And they went to it and went to it and went to it five straight times until they scored twice. And that's the difference in the game. And that, my friend, was on that coach. That's a heck of a play card. Jeff Brom called a terrific game today and next week not only will the old oaken bucket be up for grabs but inside the old oaken bucket you'll find a ball bit because the winner gets the bucket and the winner's going bowling purdue and indiana both one win away with first year head coaches from going to a bowl game as the boilermakers shock the hawkeyes in iowa city 24 to 15 the final Iowa now six and five before their date with Nebraska at the end of the year. Purdue at five and six. Both teams three and five in league one. So Kevin, the difference in this game? Play calling. It was play calling by the play callers. One guy, one guy was a little more conservative than the other. Now everybody has different teams. You have to know your team. But I think Jeff Brom, Jeff Brom, that's a gold star today. Boy, oh boy. This one will sting for those seniors here in Iowa City as Lisa Byington is with Jeff Braun. Yeah, well, you were banged up at a couple of key positions and you come in on the road to get a W. What kind of response did you see from your team here today? Well, it's a huge win for our program. Our guys really fought hard. We've uh, 
Last uh, so many weeks, we've had some ups and downs, but our guys have just continued to practice hard. Today, they came out and came out in the second half, really gave great effort. Our defense was solid. Offense made some big plays finally, and it made a big difference. The health of your quarterback was in question, and all Elijah Sindelar did was throw for 229, three touchdowns, and no interceptions. you got to keep him a little bit banged up here. <laughs> well, I couldn't be prouder of him. He's, he's for sure banged up, and he's uh, a guy that's just played tough. He, uh, he hung through it. Uh, you wouldn't even know, uh, you know, how, how hurt he is, but he just uh, stepped up for us big time. He made big throws on the money against man coverage, and our guys really responded. I couldn't be happier. You've now have five wins. You're one away from becoming bowl eligible. You have a chance to do that against your rival. What does it mean to be in this position in year one for you? Well, this is uh, this is a great spot to be in, and uh, another game that really is going to mean a lot for both teams, uh, and it's a rivalry game uh, back at our home place. Uh, I know our team will be excited about that. All right, thank you. Thank you. Well, Purdue fans have a lot to look forward to with that man leading this program. Purdue gets the victory here today over the Iowa Hawkeyes. The final score, Purdue 24, Iowa 15. Mike Hall and the gang are coming up from our Chicago studios with the State Farm Post Game Report after a brief message. For Matt Millen and Lisa Byington, I'm Kevin Kugler saying so long and happy Thanksgiving from Iowa City where Purdue wins it 24 to 15.